Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate and to The Boxing Ring, where we take on topical issues that concern us all, no holds barred. I'm kicking things off by saying, as directly as I can, bride price must go. Some of us are positioned to put up a resistance, and I say, bring it. Seydu is set to give us an education on the paucity of measurable substance in our education sector. Chuka is on part two of his trilogy on Lagos and the challenges of urbanization. Today, he takes on the street hawkers. Liboris is dedicating his advocacy to a few good men yet to be actualized, I hasten to add. Ekene calls it a wrap by turning the mirror on all of us. Are we guilty of sacrificing our sons and daughters? Sober stuff. Time to get into the ring after the break. What do you do when something passes its sell-by date? You chuck it, that's what. Bride price must go. I came across a tweet by a young man who boldly stated that as long as he pays the bride price, he can cheat and do all manner of things, but his wife cannot. Unfortunately, this is the thought process of many men. I decided to take a closer look at this practice and its impact on the participants. Bride price is money, property, or any other form of wealth paid by a groom or his family to the family of the woman he will be married to. This tradition is still practiced in many parts of the world, including Nigeria. It is incredible to me that in a world where gender equality is now a reality, that such a practice is st still endures, a practice that is based on the premise that women are commodities to be sold. It is no surprise many men take this to mean they have full ownership of the woman and can do as they please. The bride price is then taken as a license to legitimately carry out acts of sexual and physical abuse against the woman. After all, she is his property. In rural areas, if a woman is seeking divorce, it won't be granted until she has paid back her bride price in full. As most women are not financially independent in such areas, they are unlikely to afford the divorce and are therefore trapped in loveless, abusive marriages. Men are also negatively affected by this practice. With rising unemployment and inflation, many can't afford the often exorbitant bride price, which often includes money, livestock, property, and in some cases, servants. This pushes many men to turn to loans or instrumental payments, trapping them in an unnecessary cycle of debt. So far, the only argument that I have come across in favor of bride price is about culture preservation, but I believe it is time some cultures, such as bride price, need to be done away with. What say you guys? Absolutely. Um, I think that it's nonsense. Totally nonsense. Um, I don't know what, when you say cultural preservation, um, I think people misunderstand culture. Culture is not static. Um, culture, sh culture is progressive. Um, that doesn't mean you change it for the sake of change, but it means that it can change. And I can't imagine what bride price is for. Mm. I, I honestly, I've never, th I've, never th I've never understood it. So that means that even when I was very young, I had, it had already gone out for me. So I, I, it's something that I can't even discuss. Did you do bride price? I, I can't even remember. If it, if, if, if it was done, it was done 
the, the man who is married without my one knowing. That pays by yeah, price. without my knowing. No, well, and, I know that. And but so, it's, but, it's, it's, and, but it's, it's, um, and, and it's something that to me, put it this way, it doesn't give me ownership of your, of, of yeah, your wife. That, because I don't believe in it. So to me, it was done as part of cultural preservation, but it has absolutely zero. Uh, power value to you. Uh, to pa and, and power because it's the power we're talking about right now because you know the, the power to be able to say this is your commodity no no or whatever no, i think no. you know? I, I think it, you, <laughs> you, it, 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 you can you can read it another way what if yeah. it it signifies how much you value the person in question wow. can you value you're showing it? Yeah. you're so showing that look i appreciate you so much this is a token to show how much I care yeah, that can be. and respect. You know the funny and thing. Value. Then, then I think that a, 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 a gift of jewelry to the person direct is mm, more. Th th that's if I tell a girl, here's a four hundred thousand uh, pound uh, uh, bracelet. That's a bread necklace, price, also. and I give it to her. No, no, no. Yeah, her. And I give it to her. Not, I've appreciated yes, her, no. right? Not to her father, mm. her mother, Chuka, her uncles. You know, never. you're mixing this bread price. You're looking at it from just one, one section. One no, I know. Section I, I have, that's, that's of the it. country. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In Benin, for example, the bread price is twenty-four naira. Mm -hmm. okay. Twenty-four kobo, even not mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. twenty-four kobo. It's remained like that. It remains like that. Yes, I I, I agree that. It and can then be low, yeah. the other things that you bring, some for the girl's mom. Auntie. Some for the girl herself mm -hmm. to show yes, look. Yes. This is the, like the, the the gold you talk about. Yeah, that's why right. you put it there for her. Yeah, yeah. this mm -hmm. is for her. Yeah, this to show her. that you value her. Yeah. But that twenty-four cobble remains twenty-four cobble. What does it mean? Because yeah, what is you know, wait, wait, wait. Now? Because what 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 it's like the ring that you exchange in Benin. They don't exchange ring. Okay. It's like we are not selling like our daughter to you. Of. Yeah, it's a form of. A like um, what do you call, a seal yeah. on that contract. So why don't you and just so, use a normal seal? And so, what <laughs> what if you're talking about? Uh, where I disagree with you mm -hmm. is on women not being able to afford a return of bride price. Not in Benin, or the fact that somebody will go take a loan to pay bride price. Not in Benin. Mm. In Benin, it's about the marriage of two families. It is that not even the people that are getting married that receive <clears throat> or give bride price. Correct. Yeah. It is the family that look. We accept your, your, your friendship, we you. or we welcome you into mm. our family, mm. and we're taking this as a token of that establishment, to seal yeah. that uh, establishment. If we're talking about marriages and, um, you know, that man that talked about uh, <laughs> uh, owning his wife, he, I think the guy probably was just crazy. Yeah, 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 abuse bright price would abuse anyone anyway. yeah. so because sure. for me bright price um I, the value i placed on it because i had bright price paid for me and it was this kind of negotiation where my husband put something forward and my dad took one note out of yeah, it exactly and say, look, of, I'm but not it was part of my the daughter. enjoyment of like you say two families coming together you want to acknowledge my auntie because of the role she played in yeah, it. Yeah, everybody yeah, has yeah. joy you take a cloth you give her you take this it's part of it. And then in my mind, what it sort of happens to, and I may be wrong, is the Judeo-Christian aspect where you sort of, you know, uh, I think it was Isaac who did something like that for his wife, uh, Rebecca. It's just a way of saying, look, I'm taking, I'm, 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 I want to care for you, to have and to hold, to, to cherish. And, and this is my way of saying, I will take care of you. Yes. It's, not, it's not ownership. It's, it's more of saying, no, it's not yeah, ownership. But I, 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 I think it should be a care price. No, no, it shouldn't be. Yeah. It depends on how you wrong. interpret it. You, you, you know, unfortunately, some people many call, many people call it price. As, you, but I'm saying that those who interpret it wrong would still find an excuse. You're westernizing a big problem. Even if you didn't have a price. pay dowry on a woman. You pay dowry on a woman. In Benin, you pay dowry. Yeah. Dowry can be these jewelries. Yeah. It can, but that bride, the bride price, mm. Mm. it wasn't. It was the Western word for it that they now started calling it so bride price. Uh, mm. Maybe it's dowry. You know. Yeah, yeah but you and see, I'm many so families same, same insist different. on this bride price. Like I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, not trying to be funny, and I'm not. But one thing I know from my understanding, many people worry about marrying girls from Imo states okay. because yes, oh, yeah. because so you had the, the bride exactly. price. Yes, it's not I'm just. Yeah, because their bride price runs into millions and millions. Yeah. You and know? it won't take 
and, and when you say this the word, marriage the will not of take your spouse place. is very key and how you two negotiate because even if the family wants to come and take, take fleece your husband you're the one marrying him you can draw the line because you, say, you, you know, can't you can't no you can't because no, no you won't be you will not be able to in exactly the same yeah, way liberal said it was the families mm. that are it's doing this matter. let me give you my own you're, example you're, you're you're in my own case unless you have a family in my case can listen and that's or a touch, wife that's, can make her family listen. No, in my touch, case, touch and go. That's in my it, case, it, it's just ridiculous. In my case, my in-laws said, "Look, these are two young people. Whatever you think the man should give to me, I have collected in Lagos, and so leave all of those ones. The ones that you know is for the family. You, mean, uh -huh. you bring those ones that is for the family. It shows the appreciation that, mm. like I said, that price it's a seal. You call it bright price, but in a traditional." Uh, language, we call it other names. Yeah, so maybe we need to it's change like the, the language. But like, not nobody, call it bright price. The, the, because the thing is, there are uh, people out uh, there uh, who uh, misunderstand that, that word. word bright and they price. call they, you know, and also they take, they go as far as quoting from the Bible in the sense that, oh, you know, the woman is supposed to be submissive. She's like my own That's property. You can abuse anything. Yes, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm saying that they, they, majority, they are abusing Bible now. Majority, majority the of the people around today, uh, as in, we're, we were talking about it in the car, that, you know, that education is something that's lacking. So you're dealing with a lot of illiterates who, as soon as they hear bride prices, I am owning this woman. Mm -hmm. And especially if they're going to have to take a loan to pay <laughs> okay, all this bride okay, price. Are you really going to tell them that when they want to run around town and do nonsense with different women and different things and different whatever, mm -hmm. that you're going to tell a man that has taken that's a loan that, oh, no, hey, you, have taught you can't do that. Look, look, does does that give the wife the, the most, right most to even say things, anything at right. that point? Uh, the bride price, like you said, it's, for me, symbolic. Mm. Yeah. Right. It's not really so amount like if you look at the West, Southwest mm. here, you'd pay a certain amount and usually the parents will return it back to you and yeah. tell you that yeah. our child is not for That's sale. Just you understand? And the North parents. too. You know, so it's not really, but I, I want us to be careful with our culture because Westernized, uh, Westernization is, we're losing a lot of our true values. These things are, you know, two families celebrating, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. young yeah. people coming together and we say, you know what, this is just a token to, to show to my enrich. appreciation. Yeah. You you know? So I it's not you guys really. Are the ones missing it. Mm. Let's go back to when women were chattel. Was an enrichment when women of were families. nothing. That's when this concept came about. You are you are actually making it sound better. Two hundred years ago, no I mean, women couldn't even go to school. They couldn't vote. Mm. And you are telling me that Chuka. at that point in time, bright prize was nice. Chuka. Of course, it wasn't. It, Chuka. And it was can to I own her. Chuka. Why? Why? Let, no, no, no. It was you don't to need own to something. Yeah. <laughs> Chuka. Yeah. Why do you need to buy a diamond? What four hundred thousand yeah. dollars for a woman? I will not. <laughs> there you go. So because and I will not, and I don't want to pay any bride price. And I your analysis. Yes, no, I'm just saying that it is even better to give her the gift directly. So trying to say why I'm saying appreciate. No, exactly. no, 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 no. That's the you're, you're, you're moving. You're moving to something else. You're moving to no, 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 it's not. No, no, it's not. But it is. It's because of her that you're doing. You're giving that because you value. I want no business with her family. Are you married? No, no, hang on, hang on. No, I'm serious. This is a very serious matter for me because. Nobody, I have two daughters, and nobody, they're not gonna they're not gonna have if they're not gonna have traditional marriages, they will not have because there'll be no such thing as exchange of anything, not even one cover, a pin or a wait, or a glass wait, of water. Chuka, to answer your Me. question. No, no, to now raise no, another issue. To raise yeah. another issue. <laughs> I have I have I have an American white woman. Yeah who said she came to marry in Nigeria, mm. married a, an American, yeah. but she said because she loved the glamour. Oh, she wants everything. everything. So we she can wanted, have the party. She wanted, you know, it to be like the Yoruba kind of African marriage. Yes. And so how, how the man's people will come and dobale for, <laughs> you know, we did it in my in-law's house. Yeah. Yeah. And they absolutely love it. We still have the clips. That's what makes yeah. us unique. That's what oh, well, makes us unique. Just, I'm, I'm, I mean, well, I'm, I'm about to round this up, but I just want to say to say, because it is like, oh, be careful with, you culture. know, preserving culture. culture not yes. every culture not is worth having. Yes. Yes. And, and I think also, when we can, does also, take a weddings, topic, we'll see this, that not every culture. Weddings, white right. weddings scare people okay. more away yeah. from marriage. Because of that. I'm just going to have to wrap this up right here. All I am saying is let's not sustain an unproductive practice in the name of culture. After the break, Seydu assesses the productivity of our education sector 
and finds it seriously wanting. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organisation should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Examination can be likened to a sailor's compass when it comes to assessing our proximity to the desired destination. Examination, the true test of knowledge. Education is said to be a process of teaching and learning. The effectiveness of this process is usually evaluated through an examination. The purpose of this examination in any learning process is to assess, evaluate, and for accreditation. It can also be used for selection, placement, certification, and promotion. While it is often said that examination is not a true test of knowledge, we must, however, agree that there has not been a better way to test a student's understanding of a subject matter. In Nigeria, the last four to five decades have witnessed an alarming rate of increase, increase in incidence of examination malpractices, especially so for public, publicly conducted examinations at the secondary school level. Evidence abounds of increasing incidence of misconduct by students, often in collusion with teachers, school proprietors, invigilators, security personnel, and surprisingly, parents. Aside the increased rate of uh, misconduct, also worrisome is the rate of failure in public exams, NECO and WAEC. In the recently released result for 2019 exam period of the West African Examination Council, WAEC, only 64.18% of about 1.5 million candidates have five credits and above, including math and English language, in the May-June diet examination, while only about 35.1% of almost 100,000 candidates have five credits and above, including mathematics and English language, in the November-December diet, which is the private candidate diet. The death of reading culture, declining standards, inadequate funding, and decayed infrastructures are some of the reasons attributed or attributable to this failure rate. To stem this, students have resorted to self-help by involving in every form of malpractices imaginable. Private school proprietors have also cashed in on this by organizing special or magic centers where students are promised amazing results even without the needed preparation and effort. Some parents are also fond of making special arrangements for their wards to have an undue advantage during exams. Same with security personnel who connive with school principals and parents to allow impersonation of candidates. The dare consequences and implication of this phenomenon are already being felt in every area of our national life. Today, Nigeria is producing a largely unemployable set of graduates that cannot compete with the rest of the world much as we like to complain about the rate of unemployment, we must also be worried about the caliber of unemployable graduates our educational system is churning out. Also, exam our practices renders our certificate worthless in terms of institutional, national, and international standard. While hard work is sacrificed on the altar of mediocrity, talents are left untapped while discipline, honesty, dedication, and even self-actualization are pathetically compromised. Though Nigeria is a signatory to UN Sustainable Development Goal 4, which strives to ensure inclusiveness and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all, sadly, our government has failed to fully commit to this laudable goal. Education budget for the year 2020 
is a paltry 6.7%. Government needs to invest heavily in education value chain if we must overcome this calamity gradually befalling us. To be honest, what's there to argue with? <laughs> you know, what's there to disagree with? You're, you're absolutely right. There are a lot. Right. Oh, lot. Yeah. Okay, maybe you, should go. <laughs> maybe you should go first since you have a lot. Yeah, because um, mm. um, what, I, what I gathered from your uh, opening is that um, you know, examination is leading to a decline in uh, employability of our graduates. I, 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 I beg to disagree. Mm -hmm. Rather, it is the quality of education that is leading to examination of our practices. There's so much emphasis on the paper rather than the content. And, and mm -hmm. so when there's that emphasis is misplaced, people are going to do everything possible to ensure that they just get out the paper. And, and so it's immaterial how you get it. Just get it, even though you can't defend it. So I like the last part, invest in education, not just the Western education that we all know. There are so many, even the, those Western education, and they are also diversifying education to other areas. And, and so if we look at it broadly, you'll be able to tap knowledge, agree, test knowledge, to even know where the child fits in. A situation where you see a child who is very good in football, Yes, they say yes, but you must go to school, take some basic classes, but let's groom you in this area. And like I saw in one school curriculum, here we do not, we cannot make a fish to fly or make a bed to swim. So there are some people who are not fit for that your classroom, but we want them to go to that classroom. Mm -hmm. And because there's so much emphasis on that paper, they go there without necessarily passing through there. They bring out the paper and you say your education has... has Actually, I mean, I spoke to a, uh, someone who consults for the education sector, particularly in Lagos, and mm -hmm. the number of things he said, I'll try and just give a few examples right. to sort of buttress some of the points you've made and Libros has brought out. Yeah. One, he said that, you know, it's not the policy, it's the policy, the way the policy is enforced that mm -hmm. usually falls our hands, so to speak. So the example he gave was that they devised a policy because we didn't have enough laboratories where they say you can do a look like, you know, sort of a comparison, I don't know what they call it, a lab alternative. Mm. So you won't have the actual lab, but you do so, show with the theory that Maybe. this is what you would have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alternative mm -hmm. to practicals. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But the people, so there's a budget to still put labs, but they now defaulted to making the alternative practicals the default. So they will now, rather than invest, now you now find that Almost everybody does a, an alternative practice rather than a practical exam. Mm -hmm. And the money for the, <laughs> to put labs in place is misplaced somehow. The other thing he said is that even though you have a budget for the primary and the university education, there's nothing for the, the midway. So a lot of children fall out. So you find that only 1% of uh, population end up in the tertiary education, which, you know, because a lot of them fall through the gap between that primary and secondary. And, and, and there's no provision for maybe for other skills or anything. And, yes. Yeah, and then obviously he mentioned the poverty because he was hearkening to Aisha Buhari's statement recently in the news that the North are trailing behind in, the, in terms of out-of-school students. People assume, well, he said no, but the Northern people have a, a, a culture of education that they're scientists. But, you know, you, somehow the system is failing them, but isn't it failing all of us? Because you're saying who in Nigeria really has the quality of education? We haven't even come to exam malpractice, mm -hmm. but we're saying that the quality is not inspiring. Mm -hmm. The investment is so poor. The teachers are not inspired. So and you're taking even, he said, the, the people who go into teaching at the, the lower at the lower rung of yeah. you know academic performance, so you're really already doing people who are not motivated or even they don't have the knowledge to pass on. In the, so when he, by the time he listed all these things, you just looked at yourself and you said to yourself, well, "Where do we even begin?" Not to mention like the fact that we're doing six percent when other countries mm -hmm. are doing twenty percent of their budget. Well, you know what, what what is going wrong here? Yeah, I think uh, I believe it's about investment in education and also because we see that it's the people who aren't even really all that well educated that are getting, you know, getting quite far in yeah. our system. Mm. You know, we can see our okay, political so it's class. Yeah, yeah, so there's nothing that motivates anybody to, to, yeah, to, to want to focus on education. Also, the government tells us that um, they don't see education as something as that is, uh, yeah, exactly, as a priority. They're not investing in it. If you're not investing in it, do you think that then the people well, he that are said that when they invest, they, they focus their budget mainly, 80% of it is paying salaries yes. and also building schools. Mm. But he's saying that they're not even directing it at training staff. Exactly. They don't even know where to make the investment. Because the budget is yeah. so, so they don't care. They don't care that, you know, most people that come out of our education system are not actually fit no. for, for purpose. They don't care about that. 
they're not interested in investing, maybe because it actually works to their advantage. Because like earlier today, we're discussing how it's, um, it works in their favor to keep the masses uneducated. Yeah. So we are beginning to see that they're not interested in education for several reasons and some sinister. So I'm really so beginning what's, to... What's to be done? And to me, to, to add to what mm. um, Sedu has said, mm. because the, uh, the, the education uh, person you spoke with said that gap in between secondary and primary mm. and the university tertiary. So those people that fell out, because there's no budget for them, they would rather cross into this by tertiary hook by, by hook or by crew. Mm. And they, since there's emphasis on the paper, just get the paper anyway. Mm. So what we need to do is a holistic approach. Look at increase the investment, create opportunity for that gap. That so that you don't need to go to that university by hook or by hook. Mm. Whatever place you find yourself, you'll be That's catered right. for. I remember those days for you to even be a weather, you must get city and yeah. gate. I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe we're back to where uh, institutions, private institutions, will have to create this kind of Capacity. apprenticeships. Yeah. Mm. I the advocacy I was trying to make is calling government's attention yeah. to the dare emergency we have in the yes, education sector. Do. There is need for government to invest heavily in the education value change. Value change from capacity building for teachers, infrastructure, and that whole system. So it's important that this problem, the problem of our education system has to be owned by all of us since it is a factory of our human capital reserve. After the break, Chuka tackles another problem that we must all own and if we're to find our way out of what he terms a megacity confusion, Chuka, lead the way. The presence of confusion often indicates the absence of clarity. The megacity confusion part two, street trading. That we have hawkers on the streets of Lagos weaving between cars and traffic is nothing to be ashamed of, for now at least. The color and the vibrancy needs to be adopted to plan for a greater Lagos. But how can we make it safe for these hawkers? In the last week, an article came out about a street hawker who makes over a million naira monthly. He has hawkers who work for him, but he's still seen on the roads working. Many of them make 200,000 naira a month. And then we have the Malam kiosks. What's so wrong with that concept? We need to celebrate it. In the year 2000, a top executive with Coca-Cola Nigeria, who was non-Nigerian, asked me to design a kiosk that could be replicated nationwide, something that would, be, that would become iconic but simple. To be honest, I had done some sketches for this sort of thing before I met him, and, but the project never took off. What about the beautiful, vibrant but unhygienic markets? In the beginning of my youth, I remember the urban market, which was replaced with unloved concrete structures, just like was done with Tejo Osho in Lagos. You see, lessons are never learned. Lagos State government fenced off markets with ugly solid walls that were offered to MTN to paint, desecrate, and seriously damage the surrounding area. I'm referring to Falamo here. Sura and Sangraus markets, that's Sangros for all of you, were fenced off and we could no longer see the beautiful baskets of yams, tomatoes, and whatnot. Sand Grouse in particular was closed down, and a large sign signaling an impending shopping mall came up. Now, transparent aluminum fences would have performed better the role of keeping the traders off the road while still permitting views of products for sale and at the same time not requiring maintenance. So, urban planners, where are they? Why is it so difficult? to embrace what you have and build on them. Abstract what you have and give it life, new life and relevance. Lay buys along the streets where one could buy stuff on the move. This is not difficult. Hey, I, 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 <laughs> I, get, I get these old concepts. Um, you get it. We, we want to we want to westernize. You want to copy hook, line and sinker. Mm -hmm. Like a um, fellow once said, that when he was um, Kola Lobito band, his mother called him and said, look, you are playing like the white man. You can never be the white man. You can't beat them. That's their tradition. Why don't you create your own? And then people would. And that was how he created um, 
digit 80 band africa 70 african 70 and then today you know we still celebrate him even many years after his demise that's the problem i think chimamanda mm -hmm. also talked about ikoi old ikoi mm -hmm. you know you see the old houses giving way for high oh, rise yeah. and so the history is gone mm -hmm. it's lost with all of that mm -hmm. and it's the same thing here yes there's poverty everywhere people walk on the street but how can we i i, I remember some my brother-in-law came with some um, americans and then we were talking about drive through I said, you, you people don't have drive through Watch, let me take you through, drive -through Lecky, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you see a real drive through supermarket. <laughs> I can buy anything, I can even make a pot of soup yeah. right in traffic. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's true. And, and, and so for me, yes, there's poverty. People see it. If you're looking at it from the prism of Western world, it's a menace. Yeah. But how can we take it, make it ours, recreate it? And you know, it becomes beautiful. Mm. Yeah, sorry, I have to say, it's not just the prism of Western world, though, just normal prism, Seth. I'm saying that there is a danger in being too romantic about some of these things. I'm glad you mentioned the safety aspect because I want to major on that. When you see this hawkers, yes, it's all very romantic. I read the article about the young man who has been yeah, you know, very nice, very good, mm. but still. You see children who are abused because they're being driven into street hawking. You see women who are abused because they're, they're all... Be regulated. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's yes. not regulated. Those kind of things are not born out of a regulated culture. That's what I'm trying to say. So as you're romanticizing it, understand the risks. I don't particularly like the fact that I'm driving in traffic and I'm having to avoid human beings who are too busy buying and selling. It's a risk. So maybe the lay-by option, we need to look at it. But what I do mm -hmm. commend is that let's even think about our solutions. Let's engage our thinking and say, I like your aluminum thing. It sounds perfect because like you say, you want to see, you know, and why are you doing, I, I hate the MTN wars. Oh, yeah. I don't know who managed to give them. And you know, it's like we don't have standards. Why would you allow them to just put their logo everywhere? everywhere. In yeah. most they countries, there so will be a limit. You can't do yeah, this. Yeah, there'll be a can't just, you yeah, know, it's, it's all over the money. place, above I, and be, below. I, I want to, uh, this challenge goes back to the architects and our urban developers, you know, who, um, they are the ones that are saddled with, you know, but sadly, you find that most of our architects today, they've lost that true essence of our own culture. They design Very homes cool, or cities, like, liken those cities to Western, losing our own, own touch, essence, yeah. you understand? So if you know, our own local urban developers and architects embrace our culture, you would find them designing cities you know, with our peculiarities mm. taken into consideration. Yeah. So if we like, you know, peddlers like this, you create space yeah. for them where you Lay can by, just park like and, mm. and do stuff like mm. that. Mm. So again, the challenge goes back to the to architects. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I accept the challenges. <laughs> yes. I'm, glad, I'm glad you raised those concrete walls yeah. and yeah. whatever, because yeah. the truth is, I do love to see a beautiful market. Mm. You know, like when I, I was looking for um, what I thought was Lecky, what used to be Lecky Market, oh. I looked, looked, looked at They had moved this market inside somewhere, yeah. build concrete walls. And, and I just thought, this was a market I used to look forward to going to. And from just looking at it from outside, I used to get excited about Ibun, the goods I was Ibun, going to see. Ibun, now you don't see Chuka, anything. You remember this other Chuka. market called Take Arena. Enter Arena, Chuka. it's like, Chuka, you remember Concrete Liverpool walls everywhere. Market. Uh -huh. okay. you remember Liverpool in the market? Yes. In the UK. Mm. Yeah. In yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so yes. it's a replica of the Nigerian yes. market. Yes. yes, I like that. You, you even Shepherd's Bush. Mm, and Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. Regu regulated. Yes. Even if you go to Miami, um, the so, um, uh, Fleece Market. Yes. Okay. You know, it's a similar market. Yes. They're, to they're copying us. Yes, they're, they're copying us. Yes, they're copying us. So you can do, for me, for me, you can regulate all of these things, mm -hmm. but we always the, because we don't have solution. You just you know, throw the baby out in the bathtub. Pull it down. No, I, I, thank you. I like yeah, what you're doing, Chika. Yeah. yeah. Well, although, like we say, it is not rocket science, it may still need to be said. Do continue having your say on our advocacy and enriching our conversation. So, on Keke Napep and Okada's a necessary evil, Goje Arrow says a lot. Negotiations' lack of seriousness and complacency will finish everybody one day if we refuse to hold the bull by the horn. How can fundamentalists Boko Haram's ungodly act be curtailed by putting gradual restrictions on Okada? Government, private organizations, and other able stakeholders should start thinking about how we can engage our youth positively and forget Okada for good. Other parts of the world are moving towards driverless transportation. 
and we are busy discussing Okada for our youth. Youth education towards nationwide industrialization is the way to go. Time is up for us to stand up for our youth nationwide for a greater tomorrow. Anyway, still on Okada's and Keke's, Emojefe.com says, my own view is they should ban Okada's. Okada's are not only dangerous, but make Nigeria streets <laughs> look dirty and untidy. Keke and Napep are safer and look cute too. <laughs> Unbelievable. They should have different bright colors, not the ugly taxi colors, to flowerize the old, depressive, and looking streets of Nigeria. And they should rename it Taxi Assistant instead of Keke and Napep. Names are very powerful. Bad names attract bad luck. Good names attract good luck. If you enter Kekenapep, it could kill you. <laughs> but if you enter Taxi Assistant, you will have a smooth ride. <laughs> Interesting perspective. <laughs> Emojefe, thank you very much for this laugh. On nepotism, we are all guilty. Lawal Balikis, 1987, says, This nation has disintegrated totally. A country whereby criminals have amnesty. Government making peace with criminals with 100 billion naira. Imagine. I'm a graduate too. I had a HND. I studied civil engineering, but no work. And if I don't cook for some set of busy bachelors or spinsters, I won't have anything to eat. It's very annoying, I must confess. We feel your frustration, Lawal, and uh, we keep advocating for a better society. So please do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, the hash, hashtag the advocate NG. And then to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustv.com forward slash the advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Liberos is calling on a few good men to rise to the challenge of leadership. I wonder if he's one of them. Achuka, you don't even need to ask. You know, of course, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good man. <laughs> Laws are the engine oil that powers the regulation of societal norms and values. But leadership is that engine. So the panacea for a generation in Nigeria are not sets of finely crafted laws, but a few good men. Laws, no matter how beautifully crafted, without good leadership to ensure proper implementation, will end up as paper tigers. To say Nigeria is a nation in dead need of leadership is an understatement. Not because of lack of laws or the fact that our constitution is defective in so many ways than just the absence of a true federal structure, but because of the absence of a few good men to implement the ones we have. Our leaders see this appointment as opportunity to be served rather than to serve. Hence, public service is labored, come chop. It wasn't because of the fallibility of Rwanda laws that made the country what it has become today after rising from the ashes of war, but because of the efforts of a few good men led by the president, Paul Kagame. We never heard of the rigidity of the laws in Dubai until we saw the beauty that the country has become made possible by leaders, a few good men also. The laws in Europe, to enhance a better society and create better standards of prosperity for mankind were not drafted by God for the society, but by a few good men who thereafter ensure that their society lived by those set of laws. Every society, no matter how barbaric, desires such good men. Hence, in 2011, after going through a tortuous journey of democratic experience, led by a few men whose good we couldn't guarantee, and in our search for elusive dividend, we as a people, desires of a few good men, felt if we elect a graduate who didn't wear shoes as a young lad, we might be on our path to building a nation of our dreams. Alas, a man wore shoes in office and turned out to be everything but good. And in 2015, most politicians in collaboration with civil society felt that they found that good man, being a retired but not tired general, they had hoped he was going to perspire his strength to refire us into that nation which we had always aspired to be. But alas, he has retired us into oblivion and insecurity. Unfortunately, his physician of 95, 97% who voted for him and the non-inclusion of the 5% who didn't vote for him, coupled with the hailing and wailings of the rest of us, threw through the window whatever good was left of these men whom we thought were good. 
No nation develops with beautifully crafted laws alone, but the deeds of the good men who makes, executes, interpret, and implement such laws, no matter how woefully made. This is where the men in our legislative, executive, and judicial arm of government have all failed us. Without a few good men who will put the nation first before self, men who will see love for mankind as religion rather than Christianity and Muslim dichotomy, good men who will not fan the embers of Boko Haram and arm bandits by granting them amnesty and rehabilitation while our soldiers are people allowed to die endlessly, men who will say what they mean and mean what they say, men who will not openly embrace nepotism even after promising to be equitable, but who rather see merit in anyone irrespective of tribe or tongue. Men who will not deodorize corruption, but painfully fight it by putting in place processes to make it unattractive. Men who will see campaign promises are not just slogans for campaign, but as a pact with the people that must be fulfilled. Men who will not be deceptive to the extent of believing their own lies or wanting to borrow $500 million to enable us to compare with CNN, when with all the money spent so far, we have not even been able to compete with channels or TV or AIT or Plus TV. Can such men still be found in Nigeria? I dare say yes, I'm one of them. Anyway, my wishes are just mere tall, ambitious, and impossible dreams against our current political reality with our present set of leaders, where everyone is waiting for their turn to chop or would rather pray than walk. My advocacy today would therefore be, if we must restructure and progress as a nation, we must first and foremost seek not the amendment of our constitution, because the current crop of rulers will always amend it to suit themselves. But rather than pray endlessly, let's go tell it in gas, publish it in the street of Ashkelon, search for them wherever they are, those few good men, and when we find them, push and support them with the will and zeal with which we supported Jonathan in 2011 before he found his shoes, or the strength we collectively had to defy the sun and rain to support Buhari in 2015 before he misplaced his resort in INEX Ava and changed his next level. Then and only then can we talk of change or the beginning of creating a country where peace, justice, equality, and fairness will reign. Otherwise, we will continue to idealize mediocrity as good governance and celebrate the demonstration of a few crazy people and the madness we call democracy. I beg to rise. Please rise, rise, <laughs> rise and sit. Right. I mean, I think generally, just very quickly, because like, there's a lot there and I know everybody wants to throw in. You know, I, I, I like where you're going, that you're saying, let's look for the heart, because no matter what laws you put there, if someone's heart is already towards chopping, they will find a way to make that law work towards their pocket. Um, but then, because you say we should go and seek for them, I, I turn it back on us again. Because I'm saying that, you know, sometimes it's like we're suffering from what people have termed Stockholm Syndrome, where we're still idolizing you. know, somebody is abusing you, but you still find some things to celebrate about them. You don't recognize that they're, they're not the big, they're not the real, the real deal. So the only way for us, and I'm, partly why I think, and this is me doing some analysis, psychoanalysis here, why are we unable to hold our leaders accountable to a zero, zero tolerance, you know, expectation is because we ourselves are compromised in our own work in our own stance. So if we start to exact those same demands we want to place on, our, on ourselves and say in the midst of the Nigeria as it is, I will not do this, I will not um, pay bribe, I will not cut corners, I will not, then you will now feel entitled to something like that from your, you know. But as long as you, you're cutting corners, you say, well, I, I, Nigeria is difficult, at least let him chop as long as he gives me a little, because that is your standard of achievement. But if you raise your own, then you too will not tolerate nonsense. You say no, because I'm, I'm living like this. Why should this man who is the, on my behalf talking nonsense, step aside, let somebody else represent well, me. I mean, I agree with you, I can in the sense that yes, we change starts with us, you know, to an extent. But at the same time, I think our leaders need to lead. They need, need to lead by example. Like for instance, today, you know, on our way in, um, there was a queue and the police who are supposed to be, you know, policing us, taking care of traffic and whatnot. They were the ones that just drove recklessly in yes. front of us, went, siren, everything. Typical. And, you know, we're sitting there and we're thinking, oh, okay. So, but if the police did the right thing, then we ourselves will be... No, we're saying the same thing. What I'm even saying is that we, for us to recognize that the police are off track and, mm -hmm. and insist that they do the right thing, we need to be 
we need to have a high standard ourselves. Yeah, but so a lot of times people will accept the police for, behavior and yeah. even the ballet for them because they're not expecting much from them because you notice as the police are breaking, they, they are also joining behind. Mm -hmm. So people are with the same mentality of the police that if they were in their position, they would abuse power. Yeah. So they're not expecting but, but much from them. But we all know that leaders. there's one law for in, in using a, in power a, and one law for the rest in, of us. In a That's state of lawlessness, it is illegal to be law-abiding. Mm. That is why leadership <laughs> should live yes. by example. No, we agree, but for, for the followers to even recognize what good leadership looks like, they too need to have some integrity in their own lives. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's, that's all the time. I, I agree with... Uh, Liberals to some extent, <laughs> yeah, I know and, you but don't. I I believe that um, the framework, you know, should be more important than the leadership. Okay. If if you have leaders who are not regulated, like for instance, Nigeria is the only country I know where the president can allocate oil wells to whoever he chooses, or security votes, or security exists. votes. Yeah, you understand? It's not questioned. Mm. I don't think that is correct. We need to look at our constitution. That constitution needs to be reworked. That constitution would define how we as a people want to live, how our leaders, who the leaders would be, and what standards we would expect from them. And make them servants rather exactly. than... Exactly. No, For instance, it's, it's what is happening I'll in America today, we have... Uh, I think it should be America, but you let's, let's but, face, no, let's I'm, face I'm, I'm what you're I'm getting saying. somewhere, but he's, Who regulated, will the he's regulated by certain standards that he can't change. That is Who embedded will it? in the no. Constitution. First of all, Left to Donald Trump today, he would have cancelled the right with any citizenship. Of that. No, no, let me finish. Let Trump he would have cancelled the American system. He said that the American system works. Yes, but let me explain. Was it the law first? It's the same American system we have apparently. Was it the law first or the people? Was it first the law first? Of course, I know, Sadie, you're always you're, you're about the foundation, but yes. I can tell you that there, there is no fair Perfect foundation, foundation because yeah. every single human being comes from different backgrounds, different disadvantages and whatnot. The difference is in the attitude of the individual. We need That's to sit where down the few and negotiate. Good... No, forget, we need forget to sit that. down and you have can... a discussion. No, but no. you no. have a point. It because the, the examples Libras of the, gave of Dubai the, the and uh, Rwanda, you find that they have different styles of yeah. governance. Yeah. But the man has a heart yeah. to do the right thing. Yeah, if, the if we had left Babylon today, and sometimes do good is what you said. Yeah, do you know, uh, let me let me answer this. Framework. I didn't want to say is something about Baba Dubai, Akonde. Dubai, if you gave it to it, a dictator, you would deal with us here. Uh, but Baba, he, he seems to be doing the right see, thing. By uh, his can I, at Baba Debisi Akonde said something in the days of ACN. He said, "Look, we are we need benevolent dictators. Mm. So we are we are benevolent dictators, mm. and so we want to do good." Why do you think people voted massively for Buhari? When all is said and done, it all boils down to good leadership. In other words, a few good men and women. Is it all right, Ikene? <laughs> That's right, Libras. That's why I'll be looking at the legacy we as individuals leave for our future leaders, our sons and daughters, after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Society is a product of the culture we endorse and promote in our spaces of influence. I think you'd agree. Sacrificing our sons and daughters. Recently, a couple of issues in the news brought home to me the problem that is a cultural mindset which hides behind, this is how it was in my time, and so it will be world without end. The matter of Pastor Deboe's advice to his spiritual son and the practice of female genital mutilation. We live in a world where our practices are as much shaped by our fears as by our individual limitations, and we then presume to pass these disfigured belief systems onto our children. 
Starting with the most obvious anomaly, the practice of female genital mutilation. It may or may not shock some of us to know that Nigeria is ranked third highest in female genital mutilation prevalence in the world. According to statistics from UNICEF, approximately 25% or 19.9 million Nigerian girls and women 15 to 49 years old underwent female genital mutilation between 2004 and 2015. This is despite the fact that there is no medical benefit, but rather a price tag of over $1 billion to the healthcare sector in treating the fallout of this wicked practice. Then onto the matter that has been captioned, crush your crush, where a male boss was advised by his father to sack his secretary because he confessed to having a crush on her as a way of saving his marriage. Curiously, both these instances are linked. The direct victim in both cases, the woman, is made to bear the punishment of fears of an unbridled sexuality. We hear, were it, were it your husband, you wouldn't be so cavalier, as though one person's inability to control themselves is justification for despotically imposing a restriction on another from without, sometimes with life and death consequences. Though some of us may not identify with the practices I've highlighted, it's evident to me that in one form or the other, we have engaged with the dialogue around whether to endorse a culture in our homes simply because we did it in our time, even when the practice has no moral value beyond validating or otherwise condemning us. For example, I didn't take my study seriously, but since I didn't turn out badly, there's no need to insist on my children being too studious and missing out on other aspects of life's enjoyment. I partied hard and binged on drugs and alcohol as a young guy or girl, and I'm still a responsible adult, so I'll look the other way when my kids do likewise. After all, they say like father like son, like mother like daughter, Abby. Whereas it's evident that some things are not genetic, but socially generated. Let us face up to our truths as individuals and stop hiding behind religion, culture, or even our past experiences. We each have a conscience that tells us that just because it was done by us or to us, doesn't mean it should be enshrined in perpetuity. It doesn't mean I should sacrifice my sons and daughters in the name of validating me. There you go. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if in my time... I beg to rise. <laughs> if in my time I couldn't um, make a first class, nobody will make a first class in my class. Mm -hmm. You hear it, you know, in the university. By lecturers. You know, so by lecturers. Okay. You know, if in my time, as brilliant as I was, I couldn't make it. You, you know, so this, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, you know, why, why make, uh, in one breath you say, be outspoken. In another breath, you punish somebody for being outspoken. You know, there are some people who can control themselves. There are some who can't. There should be a middle ground. Learn to give advice, help. But the situation where you say, oh, because I don't want her to be, you know, too sexually attractive to men. So you just condemn her sexuality completely. Okay. You know, or the fact that a lady says, oh, I like my boss. I'm attracted to him. And the father says, oh, I forbid you in Jesus' name. You, must. you know, so for me, I, I'm trying to place a finger why, you know, we are so religious and less godly. And why we preach one thing and do another. It, it, it's, it's, it's sad. Yes, there are some situations where you didn't, um, you didn't, you parted hard, but you turned out good. But do you know if your son, you know, carries the same mentality like you? Resilience. Like you, all resilience <laughs> and that all that also, as at that time, mm -hmm. the value or the, the standards of education had, you know, risen now than it was in your time. In your time, 40 could be past mark. Now, 65 is past mark. And so your son could still be parting and coming out with, um, you know. So I, I think that's why I like, I like this, your advocacy. I think really we need to try as much as we can to find a middle ground in everything we do and put the other persons, you know, always hear the other side. And then you might probably appreciate why, you know, they feel the way they feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I agree with you to the, um, where, where you're talking about, you know, we shouldn't, just because we did something and we got away with it doesn't mean we should then um, allow oh, our awards or yeah. whoever it is to, to do that. And I agree with you because, I mean, I must say, I'm not 
I wasn't someone that enjoyed school. I didn't love school. Um, you know, I kind of just did school to just get through it. Um, you know, left me out. I'd have probably gone and done a hairdressing course. But anyway, that's for another <laughs> for another day. Or modeling. Yeah, but you know, my son, who he loves, you know, he loves to learn and everything. But he complains to me every now and again that oh, he doesn't like to go to school. Or he doesn't want to go to school. But he's doing fantastically well at school. Well, I could easily say. Uh, don't worry, chill out, don't worry, you can do like me, you know, you still get through, you get enough grades. But no, I've, I've actually turned into the opposite. I push him, I'm on top of him, I'm like, we don't want to hear it. So you're absolutely right that we shouldn't, just because things, um, we got away with things in our time. We shouldn't then allow our kids to now fall, uh, fall by the wayside or fall into bad habits or do terrible things. If you took drugs, thank God that, you know, so terrible guess. things did not happen to you afterwards. But don't go and don't turn a blind eye and watch your child going down that route and say that it, it, it's okay. Um, for Now, let's get back to this uh, female uh, genital, genital mutilation. mutilation. It's crazy. It's it, women, it, actually. Yes, mothers it comes it. close to it, the same thing I was raising with this bride price, you know, it's a culture that. Yeah, well, they, are, they are not the same. They're it the is. Same. It is. The because mother said it was done to them. It's a culture that it is, it's unnecessary. It's not right. But this is actually even more dangerous in yeah, an extent. Exactly. Mm. But it doesn't mean that bride price is not just as dangerous. So because no, it's not, giving it's not. people the right to feel yeah. like they own a human being creates all manner no, of problems. No, 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 there, yeah. There's violence. There's all manner of things that come from that. But anyway, let's put that. To even <laughs> demanding gifts. Uh, also give somebody that right of entitlement. If I give you every, I imagine a guy say, in one week, I have know how much I've spent on you. Uh, and that's it now, but that's, 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 that's part of that. It's part of that bride price. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That, that's yeah. what it is. People give you gifts so then, in then relation for, for, yes, maybe you should. No, but talk, talk on the female genital mutilation, but go on. I just take you guys with what you mentioned earlier, that we need to be very careful. You know, as parents, we want to replicate ourselves and our children. We need to be very careful mistakes. and realize that they, we are just vessels mm -hmm. through which God to guide has, them. you know, they, they are going to make their mistakes. Mm. We can only define the path for them, you know, where they'll end up is entirely up to their destiny, you know. So we need to be very careful how we try to replicate ourselves. You know, you say, oh, I made this mistake, so my child must not make that mistake. Mm -hmm. You are not in control. Mm -hmm. And you as a person, you're a culmination of all your past experience, mm -hmm. experiences as a person, all your li life experiences, what makes you as a person. Your child cannot enjoy, you can only share. It's now left for the child to take away from this and turn out. Now concerning uh, the uh, female genital mutilations okay. we're talking about, I think it's, um, it's one of those cultures that I would you know, I'm gladly beat my that. chest and say, no, we should do <laughs> away with it. Means. You know, that it's not, it's not fashionable. When you look at in the past, yeah, because what, what the, the thinking, that the, thinking behind, that, yeah, the thinking behind, the thinking behind, the thinking behind it, yeah. because I think that's another thing. We need to understand why our forefathers engaged in this practice we and educate them the on the, the disadvantage mm. rather than just ruling it out. Because if you do that, you get a lot of backlash. Yeah. They're like, no, this is what we inherited. Mm. But when you begin to highlight all the negatives, mm -hmm. you know, and you tell them, yes, we understand you're trying to curb promiscuity and things like that, you know, but you look at the other origins. side, you yes. might end up. <laughs> So having a discussion like that, rather than outrightly condemning the practice, yeah. you know, would, you would not succeed, except you have a discussion with them. Then with the... A day boy one. I think it's, it's, that, it's, it's, it's so wrong because the woman has not done the anything They said wrong. they would rather... The woman were sacked and the husband went into... Oh, absolutely. Evil. That is rubbish. I, 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 I don't All agree with that. The fact that somebody, my boss, has a crush on uh, mm. on me as a secretary or whatever, you know, I should not be punished for that. Yeah. You know? But I think quickly, again, they're going back to, quickly. you know, they're taking the Bible out of context. I think it's that if your right hand makes you sin, cut it off. It but they've now transferred it to get the right the hand. Yeah, she's the right <laughs> hand. The problem, mm. the problem yeah, is with person. our so-called, this, you know, the, um, we live in a world here you know, the man is seen as, you know, the head, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and I'm so he can never be wrong in some cases. Mm. Well, we've come full circle interrogating on productive practices along the way. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, 
or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Be sure to be part of the conversation next week, same time, same channel, as together we continue advocating for a better society. Till then, it's bye for now. Bye. Bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.